What's going on guys, welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In this video, we're gonna be covering lists in Swift UI. So lists are really, really cool and they are a fundamental component in Swift UI used for displaying collections of data. And they're really nice because they give us a lot of functionality and styling right out of the box. So let's go ahead and create our lists module and get started with our implementation here. So we're gonna create a new folder for lists, same as always and a new Swift UI view called list module. And we're just gonna jump right into this, guys. So I want you to go ahead and just type out list and open up some, uh, some brackets. And just go ahead and add a simple text component. Say like item one. And let's take a quick pause here and check this out. So we noticed that Swift UI automatically gave us this styling of this sort of list item for free, right? We can see that it is already wrapped inside of a scroll view and it's a vertically scrollable sort of list already. And like I said, they give us this styling where it's like they give us this background color and this nice corner radius and all of that comes right out of the box here. And if you were to add another item, so text item two, let's take a look at this. It automatically sticks, uh, sticks that divider in there for us. Like I said, it's this scrollable list. And it's really nice that we get this all out of the box from Swift UI. It saves us a lot of time and uh, with like styling and stuff um, to display vertical, vertically scrollable lists of data, right? And there's a lot more customization that we can add here as well as functionality, which we're gonna cover in this video. So guys, this is also compatible with for each loops. So you could imagine if I wanted to display like a hundred items, I could just go ahead and create one of my for each loops here. Say like zero up to a hundred ID backslash dot self index in, and I could say text item and uh, index, right? And you guys will notice that it automatically generates that scrollable list of a hundred items for me. So this is really, really cool. Let's keep going with how much we can, or with how we can customize these lists and add functionality to them. Like for example, swiping to delete, editing our list and all of that cool stuff. So another really awesome feature about lists guys is that we can create sections. So let's go ahead and delete this and let's maybe create a section here and another section here and to display information in these sections, guys, I'm just gonna paste in some data that I have here. Um, this is our drivers array that we have in some other place in the app. You guys can either go copy and paste that or type this out. And I'm also gonna paste in um, an array for these teams that we see here. So these are all the teams and these are all the drivers. So in each individual section, I can actually display like a list of drivers or a list of teams, like I can associate one particular data source or array with a particular section, which is really cool. So I could go here and say like for each drivers ID backslash dot self driver in text driver. And then I can do the same thing for my teams. I can just copy and paste this teams team in and say team. And you guys will notice that I now have two sections of data in my list, which is so, so cool. And this is like barely any code to get all of this really awesome functionality and design, like I said, right out of the box, guys. So this is super convenient and it's a really powerful feature that we get from Swift UI. And we can further customize these sections by adding titles to them or headers. And it's as simple as this. We can just open up some parentheses after our section declaration and I can just go ahead and pass in a string and you guys will notice that it supplies my section with a header here, which is so cool. And I could go here and say teams and we get all of this styling for free guys. And this really just coincides with all of Apple's design guidelines. You've probably seen uh, designs very similar to this in like your settings app on the iPhone, which is obviously natively built by Apple and having all of this styling for free is absolutely incredible. So let's keep going with how much more we can customize these uh, lists and apply different stylings and also some, like I said before, some different actions and see how easy it's gonna be to do that. So on this list, guys, let's go ahead and say dot list style. 
And there's a couple different list styles that we can apply here. Um, for example, I could say plain list style. And you guys will notice that completely changes the look of my list here, right? And we even get these like sort of sticky headers when it uh, when we apply that functionality, which is so cool. This is more similar to like your contacts app, right? So by simply adding this list style modifier, I can uh, completely change the look of my list and make it more customizable to suit your design needs. So what I like to do is leverage the use of autocomplete here. So you can start typing out list style and all of the different list styles should come up. So if we say default list style, that's what it look like, looks like, right? You guys notice we have this sort of gray background color and then each list item is white. And this works out of the box with dark mode as well, guys. So you could go ahead and click this little toggle guy down here, toggle this color scheme on, and you guys will notice that we get this dark mode functionality for free, 100%. So that saves us a lot of time and effort there as well. And there's a couple other ones, like we can say inset uh, list style, and I'm not sure if it's gonna look any different. Oh yeah, it does, cool. Um, one that's really, really cool is the sidebar list style. And this makes your menu items collapsible, which is so cool, or your list items collapsible. So like I can collapse my sections, which is just awesome that we get all of that functionality for free. So this is just such an incredible feature and it's so powerful, guys. It's highly performant. And you can see here that this is literally like just over 10 lines of code, right? They're like to get all of that out of the box is incredible. And let's go ahead and keep going. There's more to customization that we can add, uh, mainly a swipe actions that we can add to these list items. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So on um, this list item right here, guys, when you see uh, the, the ending bracket for the for each loop, let's go ahead and say dot on delete. And there's gonna be this thing that says perform and we can hit enter on that. And you guys are gonna notice that we get access to some sort of index set, right? So let's go ahead and say indices, which is the plural of index. Um, and basically what an index set is, guys, is it's gonna look at the section that you're in as well as the row item of that list. So for example, what I mean by that is if we looked at Lewis Hamilton, he's in the first section and he's the first item. But if we looked at teams, we're in the second section and the first item is Mercedes, right? So that's sort of what an index set is. It looks at the section and the row. So another example would be uh, Yuki Sonoda. He's in section one, item three. And here, uh, if we looked at Red Bull, that's section two, item three. So we can have multiple items that match up with each other. They could just be in different sections. So why is that important? Well, it's important so we know which item that we want to delete. So I can go here and just say drivers dot remove at or remove at offsets and pass in those indices right there. And let's go ahead and rebuild this. Right, so you guys will notice that you get this error. Cannot use mutating member on immutable value, self is immutable. So this is a little confusing, but Basically, the reasoning behind that is that Swift UI views are structs and you can't directly modify properties on structs from within them without adding some sort of mutation property, right? So in order to do that with Swift UI, and if you guys don't understand that, that's okay. Um, we're gonna cover this more in detail in the coming videos. This is sort of just your introduction to this. Uh, when we go, and declare this drivers array, guys, if you go and make this something called a state property, so say at state var drivers, this gives you that mutation capability. So now we can mutate this array and remove drivers from it, um, even though this is a struct and we're inside of that struct and trying to modify something from within that struct. Uh, that gets more into the details of what structs are. Like I said, don't worry too much about that. Um, we're gonna cover that in more detail as the course goes on. But you guys will notice that now, what I get is this absolutely incredible swipe to delete option, right? And guys, I can just go ahead and swipe all the way through and it will just delete that driver for me. Or I could go here and tap on it to remove the swipe action. I could just tap delete and it deletes it for me. And we get all of those animations and everything absolutely free with this on delete modifier. And you guys will notice that it only applies to this uh, 
particular section, I would have to add that to this guy as well. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep it here for now. Um, another really awesome feature that we get, guys, is the ability to edit items in a list. Um, we're not going to cover that in this module because there is something else we have to do in order to make that work. And I want us to come back to this module a little bit later on in order to introduce that functionality. But basically, it's the ability to like drag and drop items in different places in the list or uh, section, which is super cool. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this list module, guys. All in all, it's a super powerful tool that we have in Swift UI to display vertically scrolling lists of data. And they give us so much functionality and designs right out of the box for free just with this list module right here or list uh, API. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. In the next one, we're gonna be getting a lot more in detail with the state properties and what they are. And we're gonna start doing some more fun stuff with actual with introducing actual functionality into our apps by uh, taking a look at buttons. And we're gonna actually introduce like clickable buttons and have them do stuff when we click on them, which is gonna be so much fun. So get excited for that. We will see you there. Peace out.